Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world content. I finally managed to get my hands on the other Bertonian sculpts. I was missing the new ones. I got the damsel a couple of weeks ago and I managed to put out a video for that. You guys really liked it. And the other day I did notice that the new BSB set and the Questing Knight on foot had returned to the website and I placed an order for them very, very quickly. They arrived the other day, I got them built and I decided to do the BSB on horseback in today's video. It's a model that I've had my eye on since the day it was revealed. I could not wait to get stuck into it. Obviously it's a very important piece for Bretonian players. If you do not know, Bretonian players were um, kind of synonymous with battle standard bearers. Um, in this edition, not so much. You do get a free one in the army if you decide to take one. But uh, back in the day, you could not take a Bretonian army without a battle standard bearer. So for me, they were always a super important thing. And I'm very happy to finally have the new scope. Like I said, I'm gonna to gotta to paint it in today's video. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. The, the banner is completely flat. I have to add in all the designs on it myself, and which is not something I think I'm gonna find easy, but we'll see. Before I get into this video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to my patrons. Patreon has been a bizarre place for creators for the last couple of months with the addition of the free option, which is hurting us to no end. So for all you guys out there who have stuck with me and who have supported me in the last couple of months, thank you so much. It really does mean the world to me and it does mean I can continue making these crazy videos. If you do want to support me, there are links in the description below that will take you over to the Patreon site. You can ignore the free option. There is literally no benefits to you guys for doing that at all. And everybody else that gets involved will get access to an extra video every single week on a private Discord server. So if you're interested in that, supporting the channel, helping me grow, then check it out. Okay, without further ado, let's get stuck in and painting this Bretonian BSB. I don't think anyone can argue with how beautiful these new Bretonian sculpts are. I mean, I for one, um, and I've said this in previous videos, I am for one kind of up for and excited by the re-release of old sculpts. This whole like, uh, how can they charge this much for 20 year old sculpts? That doesn't bother me at all. It's okay if you feel that way. That's totally fine. I'm not saying you're not, you don't have valid reasons to feel that way. But for me, the nostalgia hits me in a certain way that I actually thoroughly enjoy painting old miniatures. There's a little bit less detail, a little bit easier to paint, a little bit more fun rank and file models, it's great. But then I start painting some of these newer sculpts and my mind does wander a little bit to, oh my god, what would an entire new sculpt Bretonian army look like? And after painting these guys up and painting the on foot knights, I am very curious as to what a new modern knight would look like. Something like this, I would imagine. And by the end of this video, I hope you guys are uh, wondering the same thing. So the models got constructed and then obviously we sprayed them black and then gave them a dusting of grey sear, uh, which is my normal go-to beginning point for painting my contrast base coats. A lot of people in videos do ask me, what's the point in applying contrast the way you do, as you tend to paint over quite a lot of it in the layering stage. The point of it is, it is the quickest way of applying base coats to a miniature. I have actually done a video previously, it is one of my Dragon Trappers videos, where I 3D printed the exact same miniature twice. And then I base coated and shaded one with regular base coat paints, and then I base coated and washed one with contrast paints, which basically took both miniatures to the middle section of painting a model. And the contrast one was more than twice as fast. And I must say with a game like Warhammer the Old World where you're taking, you know, three or four blocks of 20 miniatures, there's a lot of guys to paint, a lot of miniatures to paint up. And having a quick and accessible way of getting base coats and washes on them, I think is going to be super, super important. So hopefully that goes a little way to explaining why I do that. I mean, a lot of the time I do, the layering stage is just for the, you know, the higher points of uh, color and light. It adds volume and contrast. But sometimes I do paint over entire flat areas again. I think it still has its value for building up the tone, building up the color, and like I said, applying fast base coats. The flag was uh, obviously not embossed. It had some piping all around the edges, which was very nice. But then for the rest of it, I had to go with my own design. Now they don't give you any big transfers or anything like that, which I think is a missed opportunity. Perhaps they could have thrown a small one in just with this kit for Bretonian banners. That would have been pretty cool. So in the end, I had to uh, basically copy what they had done on the, the packaging themselves. So on one side, it was a halved black and red banner and then on the other side of the flag it was a quartered black and red banner which i thought was a very cool thing i never thought about doing two halves of a banner different which i know sounds stupid but i honestly didn't i'd always just painted a banner the same on both sides and it was a nice kind of change of pace to know that because i find repetition in painting stuff like that kind of annoying so it was actually a lot of fun to go by and quarter one and half the other the only problem was for me 
the not quarter side, the half side, just kept reminding me of the German flag. My Bretonians, I suppose, are quite Germanic, so it could very well work, but obviously the transfers did help an awful lot in the end. Obviously, I'm being quite rushed. I used my Blood Angels Red Contrast for the first half of the colors, and then I'm going to jump over to the Black Templar Contrast to do the opposite side. Now, you will notice that what I did was I did the piping in opposite colors. You can see that the red ones, the piping is black, and for the black water, the piping is red. On the, disc, the the example they gave on their one, the the Games Workshop official one painted, it was white piping. I didn't want that at all. It just wasn't for me. It was around the piping on the banner as well. I decided to do that in gold. You'll see that later on. I did get a little bit nervous that I wasn't the right call at one point or two, but uh, by the end of painting the whole thing, I was really happy with the final result. Yeah, and I took it, think it looks pretty cool. Like I said in the intro, you know, Bretonians and BSBs go hand in hand, even in the current old world rules. Obviously, you pay 60 points to take a paladin in your army. And normally, for every other army in the game, you pay 25 points to give him a battle sander bear, which then gets deployed with your army, where Bretonians get that 25 point banner for free. You can only take one battle sander bear in your army, but now I've currently got four for my army, so I don't really know what the plan is there. I know that this guy on horse is probably going to be the one I take the most often. You will sit this guy in my second unit of Grail Knights or something like that with a nice powerful banner on him. I'm just buffing that unit even more. The one on foot, I'm very tempted to just use as the standard banner miniature for my foot knights because the foot knights don't actually get a banner miniature. They just have a like a relic. The relic is cool, but I do prefer big flags. And like I talked about, I'm actually working on the on foot version as part of my Twitch streams this week. So if you want to finish, see me finish off that particular miniature, I'll be finishing it off tomorrow, Thursday at 8 p.m. Irish time over on Twitch. You can go check that out. I'll leave links in, down in the description if you want to follow along and get notifications when the stream starts. I do love a good burgundy color. I've been using it on all the handles for all of my swords and lances throughout the army. And they decided to do it for the huge big plume that comes out of the top of the horse, which I love. And there's a ribbon tying its tail as well. We decided to do that color as well. I also did all the sword handles and dagger handles that they have on this miniature in that color as well. Basilicanum gray was what I used to base coat the horse. I decided to go for a gray horse. The example they gave was black, but since there's so much blackness on the, the miniature already, I decided to push it just a little bit further away from black with a really dark gray. And I think that does help break it up just a little bit. Like I said, I already have the damsel painted. That was another miniature that I did in a previous video. So that is something you can see. You can go check that out in a previous video as well. I had a lot of fun painting her and you guys seem to really like that video. I was very proud of the result that I did get with her. And I'm also very much looking forward to powering ahead and doing the questing night on foot as well. My Bretonian playlist of videos is definitely starting to get flushed out. I've got like bombards, I've got knights, BSBs, damsels, all sorts of other bits and pieces are on the channel. And I still have a bunch of videos to do. I definitely want to do a trebuchet video. I want to do a mounted yeoman video. Maybe a few other bits and pieces. There might be a questing night week, potentially, if the if the interest is there. Grail night week was a huge success. And I would love nothing more than to spend Monday to Friday painting up five awesome questing nights. They're such unique models and they deserve that kind of attention to detail. But maybe people aren't excited for another five days of nights. I have no idea. Lead Belcher was used to base coat in all the metallics. Obviously, we'd be throwing gold in on top of that. But I like to base coat all the metallics first with silver. And then go in and decide which parts are supposed to be gold after that. Now, on the on foot version, which I've already base coated and washed on the Twitch stream last night. Obviously, I realized he has brown leather gloves with some armor panels over the top of it. I think the one on horse is fully gauntleted, but maybe I got that wrong. So if that is the case, you can go back with the Gargax sewer and you can paint in the hands with that. I'm just going to leave it as silver. Knights usually had very armored hands as, you know, swinging swords at each other and deflecting with uh, other swords means that your fingers are pretty close to the uh, sharp end of the sword at all times. So a bit of extra protection uh, is not unwarranted. The Retributor Armor Gold was then brought in for all the details. So obviously there's only a few bits on the horse itself. But I did carry it through quite a lot to the guy on the horse. 
He's got a crown. He's almost go, does have a crown. The crown is an interesting choice I decided for the the head of this guy. It makes him seem like he's the king, but he's in no way, shape, or form the king. I do have a plan that perhaps he was a king or a duke of a previous hold. And he has since been swayed to my particular lord's banner. And he's given a place of honor as his personal banner bearer. Maybe it's an interesting storyline. I have no idea. Of course, following through with some of the other gold details, like the he's this guy's carrying a morning star. So some of that detail is gonna go uh, gold. And of course, like I said earlier, the piping across the entire banner, plus that nice uh, fleur de lis that's on the top of the banner pole is gonna go in gold as well. This definitely helped. I really did like the banner in the black, red, and gold scheme. Those colors always look fantastic together. Like I said, I have a couple more BSBs to do Battle Standard Bears to paint. One is the original metal Battle Standard Bear, an absolutely gorgeous miniature, which they haven't brought back to Made to Order or anything like that. At least I don't think they did. Maybe they did. But it's my original one and I definitely want to break it apart, get it cleaned up, assembled properly, and then paint it up and maybe just use as a banner for my other Grail Knight unit. I think it's, it's such a nice piece that deserves to get a paint job and used on the tabletop. And that's one thing I'm trying to figure out now. How do I get enough of these beautiful models on the table all in one go? So I think of this guy as my official Battle Sander Bear. The on foot one, like I said, goes with the Foot Knights. And then the old metal one gets joined with my Grail Knights as just their banner. Then it just leads my Pegasus wielding BSB. I can't for the life of me figure out how or why you would take a Pegasus Battle Sander Bear. Seems like a bizarre, bizarre choice. I mean, if he had a monstrous kind of uh, aura, so maybe the BSB was a kind of a bigger range mount. I don't know. Seems like a vulnerable place for a banner. Maybe I'm wrong. If you guys have any idea why you would take a paladin on a royal hippogriff, royal hippogriff, royal pegasus, the BSB, please let me know. I can't figure out why you would do that. Now, while I applied some Nolan oil to shade all the pieces down, I also added some texture paste, some dark earth from AK Interactive onto the base. Once all that was dry, I went in and started the layering process. I started with Mephiston Red and layered up all the red parts. You saw me showing off the air paint pots. That just tends to be the, the uh, Mephiston Red that I like to use. It's basically like a pre-thinned version. It works a treat. A bunch of the old air paints worked a treat as just really good layer paints. I found none more so than the reds. And I've been using these to uh, layer up red for quite a long time now. Very carefully painting in the wings, I think, on the head. He's basically got a dragon uh, motif on his helmet. And then, of course, very carefully going in with the layer paints for the banner. Now, when I applied the base coats with the contrast, the black and red, I wasn't too worried about exactly straight lines and exactly straight proportions and making sure that it was very even. It's when I go on to the layering step for the Mephiston Red, the Evil Sun Scarlet, and the Corvus Black, which I'll be using to layer all the black parts in a moment, that I really kind of go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, controlling the brush and trying to get as straight and even lines on the banner as possible. And I think I did a pretty good job. You can be the judge of it by the end, but um, I think I figured it out. Obviously, it would be a lot easier if the flag was laid out flat and then you can fold it into that nice kind of fluttering pose that it's in afterwards. Unfortunately, that's not how hard plastics work. So I had to paint it in its kind of folded up state which means I had to try and figure out where the curves went and where the designs went. That's really not my strong suit. People who are more adept at art than I am may have figured that out easier, but for me, it was actually a little bit of a struggle to figure out. Like I said, these guys were available for a short period of time and then they went away again, but they do seem to be returning with kind of more frequently now. So people are getting their hands on them. I do hope to see a million other color schemes of these awesome nights appear um, on YouTube or on Instagram over the coming weeks and see what people can really do. I know, for instance, Duncan was dying to get his hands on them and couldn't. I'm sure he's ordered them by now. And I really can't wait to see what uh, color scheme Duncan goes for with his versions. The Evils on Scarlet, just to make all the red pop. And like I said, I'm going back in again with those dragon's wings on his headpiece. Very carefully doing uh, kind of the last highlight on those wing pieces because it's such a focal point. And then, of course, going in with the, the banner. I don't need to use this to neaten up the lines. It's going to act as a highlight. So it's very much kind of like the middle of the red that's getting done with kind of a feather technique to give it a bit of texture. 
We're kind of finished with the red now, and then we're just going to do a single solid coat of Corvus Black as a highlight for all the black areas. I didn't mean to say solid coat, like just paint over all the black with this, but like we did with the reds, we're going to aim for the higher points and leave the darker recesses and shadowy areas nice and dark. Anyone who doesn't own a pot of Corvus Black, I recommend you go out and get one. It's my kind of go-to paint to layer up black. It's basically black with a touch of grey to it. It works a treat. Your eye registers it as black, but not flat, boring black. It looks like it has a bit of colour to it. It looks really good. And it's one of my kind of thumbs up paints. I really need to do that, that video list of top 10 paints I think everybody should have. And then of course, carrying across all those uh, techniques to the other piece. Now there is other parts of this one. There is a beautiful kind of strapped up shield with a sword that goes on the flank of this horse. You will see it at the end of this video. And it has all the same colors that I've been doing for this entire miniature. I did record a bunch of it. I decided not to include it because it's just kind of repeating myself over and over again in different areas. So just know that when you're doing the red and black quarters on that shield, if you'd go for the same scheme, you know the same time. When I did the black, I did the black on that part. When I did the red, I did the red and that bit of gold, leather, whatever. I followed along and did the same steps. Of course, means it'll match in perfectly with the rest of the guy. And be kind of uh, painted along the same time frame. As you can see, I'm constantly rotating the pieces around because I'm getting the most comfortable grip. You should always remember that your whatever hand is holding the piece should be the bit that's rotating. Your hand that's holding your paintbrush should be the thing that's staying as steady as possible. You don't want to move your hand holding your paintbrush into awkward positions for brush strokes. You will notice in my video that that hand tends to stay in the same spot and I move the miniature around that. This leads to much better brush control. Using some Akatachan flesh here to highlight all of the leather parts now. We are really starting to get somewhere now. I'm excited. A bit of Iron Breaker was brought in, which is a bright silver paint. And I use this to highlight all of the metallic parts on this particular horse. That goes for all the silver and all the gold. Got a nice touch up of this silver. It's what I've been doing for all of my Bretonian force. Normally, I just go Lead Belcher, shade down, and then hit it with Lead Belcher again. I do like darker metals. But I've always felt Bretonians, especially their armor and their plate, is such a well-fashioned, well-formed, well-kept pieces of equipment. They've got lots of squires and stuff that will obviously polish and clean them each and every evening after battles. So I do like to go with the Iron Breaker and make them kind of polished and shiny. Maybe I'm weird, but uh, I think it works a treat and I do like the final result. And here I am using that exact same silver paint to using it some touch highlights on the gold. will help all that to pop as well and will help both the metallic colors blend together. Now I haven't done any of the new Tomb Kings miniatures except for the awesome Bone Dragon that is fully painted and ready to rock and roll. But if you are curious to have videos done for the other resin Forge World models for Tomb Kings, even the new Tomb Swarms, please do let me know. I'm more than happy to get my hands on those and paint them up for you guys. They're miniatures that I want to have in my collection anyway, and I will be working on quite a lot of Bretonians or Bretonians and Tomb King stuff in the very near future. And I'd be more than happy to turn as many of those into content and videos for you guys as possible. Now for the awkward time, it's trying to apply transfers. So this particular set of transfers was an interesting one because it was three broken lances. I took it off of the Knight's Imperial Knight transfer sheet. I wish it wasn't black because obviously half it kind of gets obscured by the bottom, but it's a dark enough color that there is a difference. After I applied those, I hit them with contrast medium to blend them together and it also gets rid of the edges of the transfers. And with that, we're kind of at the final point with these miniatures. It's now time to... There's that shield and sword bit that I haven't showed you guys, but I've been painting along with the, the rest of it. I think it's now time to get these miniatures assembled. So I got them all off their temporary stands, got them cleaned up. And these are the four components that do make up the knight. I glued the knight into place. And then it was time to put the shield on his flank, which you don't have to do. The, the bit under him is fully molded. So if you don't want to bother painting that shield and sword bit, you don't have to. I just like adding all the extra details to the models it makes it stand out. So I glued those into place and this was the finished battle standard bear for Britannia. I really, really love how he turned out. I'm super proud of the effect and the, yeah, just I can't wait to see him deployed in a unit of knights charged across the battlefield. 
I took some uh, still images. I've obviously applied all of the grass tufts to the base as well to really help it stand out. Like I said, that side of the banner is nice. I do prefer the back side, which I will show you now in a moment. The quartered with the fleur-de-lis symbol and the axes for this particular Bretonian household, I think do look fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed this and please do let me know what other videos you want to see for the old world in the very, very near future. Okay guys, I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. Very proud to have him added to my Bretonian force and have him included in my army. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see the uh, questing night on foot done as a video. The on foot version of him I did on my streams over on Twitch. I stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Irish time. So if you're interested in joining along, being held accountable for getting some hobby done on a weekly basis, then please feel free to check that out yourself. And you can see me painting up more of these Bretonian miniatures. And make sure that you're also subscribed to the channel. I'm doing a giveaway this year where I'm going to give away a Titan at the end of 2024, depending on how many subscribers I do get. The ultimate goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers and give away a Warlord Titan. All you need to do to be in a chance to win is subscribe. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.